It's time for another roundup of things you can do in Blender. And why not? Because there are still hundreds of features to showcase to you guys. So here's a bunch more tips and tricks to help you learn more of what you can do in Blender. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. So let's get into these tips and tricks. Selecting a face in edit mode and hitting shift numpad 7 will align your view to the current active face top. This is a great way of navigating your models when working on your modeling or texturing, making sure you always get the right angle. Now, if you don't have a numpad, for example, if you have a laptop, you can emulate it by going into edit preferences, input, and enabling emulate numpad. If you insert a face with I, you can hold control and move your mouse left or right to extrude the inset face up or down. This will do it along its own normal. And if you then let go of control, you can then again decrease or increase the inset. This is a great way for adding detail when doing hard surface objects. Now let's say you have a bunch of objects in your scene and you want to add the same modifier to each of them. That's actually very simple. So you can just select one at the modifier and set it up as you wish. Select all the other objects and then hit Ctrl plus L and choose copy modifier. This will copy the modifier to all selected objects. That's great, but now you maybe want to change the modifier and all the other ones as well. So again, very simple to do. Just select all of the objects with the modifiers or values that you want to change. Select the value you want to change, type in the value. And in this case, I'm going to change the levels here and then hit Alt Enter to confirm the change. This will copy the change to all other selected objects with a similar value available. Now this works with any value, not just a modifier value, but you can change any value. For example, the skill here for all of these selected objects. So again, select the objects, go to the value, type in whatever you wish there, and then hit Alt Enter to confirm it. When doing animation, you'll often run into slow playback issues, especially when doing heavier scenes, which is not great because it doesn't show you the flow of your animation uh, and it's definitely nowhere near real time. Now you can increase the playback speed by, you know, limiting your scene, but there's actually a different way of doing this as well at the cost of frames being dropped. So if we go down here to the timeline and into the playback tab, we have this sync setting. And if we change this sync setting from play every frame to frame dropping, it'll play back the animation in near real time with frames being dropped to speed up the process. This means Blender removes frames, which slow down the playback and instead optimizes on delivering the FPS of your choosing. This is perfect for getting a feel of the animation in your project. If you're serious about Blender to eventually land a job in 2D or 3D, it's very important to have a portfolio. A portfolio will help Help you showcase your work to stand out amongst the crowd. I've been running my own website through Squarespace ever since I started this channel and it's been so simple to use and maintain, I really love it. Their award-winning templates are a great way to get a quick design going, allowing you to make use of all their professional portfolio designs. And to help you as an artist, you can even sell artworks through an online store on your website. So when you're ready to create an amazing website or portfolio, head on over to squarespace.com slash kaizen tutorials to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code kaizen tutorials. Sometimes it's convenient to be able to move a vertex along its own edge. Most of you might know this, but you can do this with the edge slide function, which you can get to by pressing GG. If you now want to extend the vertex beyond its own edge, you can do so by pressing C to disable clamp. You can now move the vertex freely extending along its own edge even outside of its bounds. Again, uh, do make sure to disable clamp after choosing which axes you want to slide your edge on because it will lock the axes after disabling clamp. Let me know your favorite Blender tips and tricks using the rocket emoji in your comment so I can find it back and use it in my next video. When using Blender 3.4 or higher and maybe you're doing some shading from time to time or maybe you're trying to follow along with this tutorial of mine on how to create professional materials, you might have run into a problem. The mix RGB node is gone or so it seems. Well, it's not really though. There's two ways to get it back. 
The first and right way is to just add a mix node. The mix node is now a more versatile function of the mix RGB node and has replaced the mix RGB node because it can now mix more than just colors. So by selecting the drop down here, you can change this to color. So it's by default set to float, but change it to color. And basically you're getting back the mix RGB node. The only difference being that it now has an extra clamp option for the factor. Alternatively, you can now also use this mix node to mix vectors or float values. The second way to get the mix node back is by using the node Wrangler add-on, which comes with Blender. With it enabled, you can hold Control Shift and right mouse click and drag over two compatible nodes. So in this case, I'm using two color ramps and join them together in a mix node. This is the old mix node, which if you open the node menu with N, shows up as mix legacy. You can fade objects closer to the camera using the camera data node in the shader. In the most basic form, add in the node and take the view Z depth and plug it into the alpha of your shader and add a map range node in between. Fiddle around with the from max range to get the desired fade range. But in a more practical manner, you might be using a cloud image which already has its own preset alpha. So you need to combine the two for it to work properly. You can do this by taking a mix node again and set it to color and then multiplying the map range, camera data in this case, over the original image. This will respect the original alpha and still fade out the image correctly using the camera data node. Now this is perfect for adding additional realism when using for example cards or volumetrics or particles. In edit mode, a lot of the tools on the left side of your screen press T if you don't see them, have a secondary tool included. Most of these are very useful, like the extrude manifold tool, which allows you to extrude in and out parts, which then automatically get corrected geometry. Or for example, the two sphere tool, which can help you spherize most shapes. And for example, the scale cage tool, which is a very intuitive way of scaling objects. You can also use the scale cage tool in object mode, by the way. When opening blend files from other people, for example, my free project files available on my Patreon, it can be very annoying to see a different workspace than your own. Luckily, Blender will let you open up other people's files with your own workspace if you want to. Just go to File, Open and look up the file you wish to open. Now click the gear icon up top here and make sure to disable load UI and open up the file. The file has now been opened, retaining your own workspace layout. For all you crazy Imperial system users, looking at you America, Blender automatically converts Imperial units into metric. So you can just type any Imperial size into a field, e.g. 5 inch, and Blender will convert it to its metric counterpart. To get this to work when using a transform shortcut like G, you'll have to start off by using an is sign and then type in 5 inch in the full text. So this is both useful for people who are better at judging sizes in their mind in Imperial units because of where they grew up, as well as learning what the metric equivalent is of an Imperial size. And who knows, maybe one day you won't even need those weight measurements anymore. Alternatively, you can also change Blender's units from metric to Imperial by going to the scene properties, units and changing it from metric to Imperial. If you've been enjoying learning all of these things you can do in Blender, I've got a lot more features to show in these videos here and here. Thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel. If you want to support me as well and get access to all the project files I've made so far, including the ones used in this video, please do join the Patreon.